Afternoon everybody, Christian here. Today I'm going to make a Saturday video. It's going to be ahead of schedule, so it doesn't really matter what today's date is and all that stuff. Um, we're going to discuss a particular verse in the Bible, and actually just a piece of a verse. I'm going to go to Judges, chapter 11, verse 3. And we're going to talk about something in here. You read it, and you tell me if you can figure out what I'm going to talk about, all right? <laughs> We gotta get some glasses. I can't read this small print. All right. So, like I said, we're gonna to go to Judges chapter eleven, verse three, and then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob or Tob. And right here is what I want to talk about: worthless men gathered around Jephthah and went on raids with him. So, I want to discuss the concept. That's just revealed right there. Um, in my last video, I, I spoke about the patterns of the world versus the patterns uh, of the kingdom of heaven and how you want to you know, separate between these two and perceive the world um, accurately. You, you have to recognize the patterns of the kingdom of God versus the patterns of the world. Now, in the United States, we have this concept, um, all men are created equal, right? And I, I want to talk about that for a minute. Uh, I would go so far as to say the phrase created in there, all men are created equal, uh, is very important. If you remove the word created and you say all men are equal, that'd be a false statement. And I could prove that in a moment. But all men are created equal, I think that that implies it accurately. And that is that we all have been formed, God forms us, and we have the right, we have the, choose, the, the, the option to choose whether we're going to become worthless or are we going to become of great value. And there's, of course, a scale between these two, right? So you could be worth a great deal and you could be worth nothing, uh, worthless. Um, actually, worthless, I would take that so far and say they have a negative value, okay? So not just zero, but they have a negative value. So that would mean if you got around the, those types of people, that negative value that they, they carry with themselves would start to subtract value from your own life, from your own um, experience, okay? Now, some of this to me seems extremely obvious. You might be like, yeah, Christian, we know this already. Uh, or maybe you're like, wait a minute, no, I disagree. I think everyone's created equal, you know. Or maybe you're wrong in another way. And you're like, yes, I think not everyone is equal. And I think it depends on the, you know, the color of your skin or something stupid like that. That's not what I'm talking about. That's, and don't get down, you know, thinking that that's, that's how I view things. It's not. I don't think that has any bearing whatsoever. I think the actual value of a person is derived from the amount of truth that is in them and their adherence to that truth. So you could know all kinds of scripture all day long, but not apply them. You'd still be worthless. Um, you would be a weight on society, you know? Uh, you could have lots of education kind of thing, and then misuse it until you you are only hurting the society you operate in i believe you have to be um following god following truth right jesus is the truth the way and the life um the light um whenever you see that in scripture because as many times in, in scripture we'll talk about um worthless men it's an important key element that should be taught. I think it should be taught in public schools. People would understand them when, they, when they're sitting there and they're saying, why does this you know, matter to me? It's increasing your value to society that you operate in. Uh, what does it matter if I you know, follow the rules when other people don't? Well, it's the, the thing that separates between those who are worth something and those who are worth nothing. That's kind of, somebody had stated before, I forget who it was, but they were saying in the Garden of Eden, had the tree not been there, and had God not said, don't eat of it, 
you wouldn't be able to determine who was a person of integrity and who wasn't. But the moment he said, don't eat of that, you got to see real, real quick who was a person of integrity and who wasn't, right? Apparently everybody wasn't. But that element, having that standard there, it made the difference, right? In our society today, and oftentimes what I see, and again, I don't see everything that you see and you don't see everything that I see, but the way that I see it, right, in my opinion, from my experiences and what I've heard people say and how they act, there seems to be this false teaching in the world that everyone's of the same value, and that's not true. Um, Job said that there were people he would let feed his dogs, basically, take care of his dogs, right? And that makes sense because the wicked are cruel even to animals. So there are clearly differences between the values of people. And it's up to you to be able to determine that. Now let's eliminate anybody who might be out there saying, I disagree with everything Christian's saying. Everybody's of the same value. Okay, if you're a female, do you just tell your neighbor, hey, if you see a man passing by, tell him to come visit me because... All men are the same value. I'm just looking for a man. No, you, you're looking for something more, right? You're looking for something of value beyond just being male, right? Men do the exact same thing. We don't, um, and I, when I say men, there are some men that don't, right? I used to be one of those men that didn't. But today, if I were to be counseling my son to, you know, when he's going out and dating or something of that nature, I would be counseling him not to just look for any woman, but to look for a woman who has integrity, a woman who is beautiful on the outside and throughout, right? Not necessarily that they're going to be perfect. I'm not, I don't know that I've ever met a perfect person. I don't think I have other than the Lord himself, right? So let's not get too far into the weeds there because obviously no one's perfect, but I would expect people to attempt it, you know, to to strive for perfection. That should be everyone's goal, you know. This whole church theology that, you know, no one's perfect and God accepts you just the way you are, you know, it's okay if you sin a little here and there. I want you to imagine for a minute that you were getting married to somebody. Hang on. That you were getting married to somebody and you're, you're expressing your vows, right? And the female or the male, you know, depending on which, which side you're on, they told you, you know, I, I love you, I, I want to marry you and everything, but just so we're clear, you know, I'm going to cheat on you. I can't not, you know. It's just the reality of the situation. Or or they said, you know what, I'm going to murder you. I just, I mean, I can't not because I'm human, you know. I, I murder people on occasion. None of those things would be acceptable. So why do you let pastors tell you this kind of garbage that like it's okay if you sin and things like that, Jesus understands and everything? Hold up. We need to rethink that and recalibrate how we're wording this stuff, you know. To express it accurately, we stumble, we fall, we don't stay down, we rise again, right? And we, we try again. And we bring it to the Lord, you know. We let Him work through us to get that out of our life. We don't just go on letting that continue to remain in our life. And there are things that I, I was horrible at, and the Lord delivered me from them. And then after that, he started delivering me from things I didn't even know were there, right? I, I didn't perceive a problem, but he did. And so he started opening my eyes to see it and then delivering me from it. That's the God that I serve, the, the, the Christian God. He is actually looking for a bride, right, without spot or wrinkle. And he's not saying, do it on your own, and when you're perfect, come to me. No, he's saying, walk with me, talk to me, and I will... Um, change you from the inside out, right? And you won't be who you used to be in the past. That's truth, right? Anyway, he's changing your value when he's doing that. I used to be a worthless person. I can guarantee you that. And then over time, God has increased my value. Um, and I, I know that, you know, there's the dead and then it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And he's a great value, of course, and that kind of thing. We could, we could describe it in that way as well. But I, I want to show the value is in the truth and the adherence to the truth. And so then you start to appreciate, again, the value of truth 
and then you start accumulating it, right? Because the more that you apply the truth in your life, the more value you're going to have to the society you're living in. Even if your society is just your own little, I, I raise my children, and that's the, I never get out of the house other than that. Those children are going to be blessed because you are that blessing to them. You're bringing the truth in there. You're not allowing them to be corrupted with more falsehood. That kind of thing. You're you're a benefit to society. In that They're going to go on and have their own children. They're going to go on and have their own spouses. They're going to go on and have their own businesses. They're going to go on and, you know, so forth and so on. You, you have this domino effect. And it really comes down to just a very simple concept of, I want to be a person of great value in the eyes of God, um, by God's standard, right? That, that should be taught in church, and I don't think it is, I don't, not by and large. Um, and I think the scripture, if you would read through, you know, if you're reading along and you hit Judges 11, chapter, or chapter 11, verse 3, and you see that somebody's surrounded themselves with worthless men, um, you could stop and go, hey, hang on a minute. Why are some men worthless? I mean, the, is this got to do with race? No. Is it got to do with, you know, the, the height of one person or the muscle mass of another person? No, no, none of that stuff. It has to do with the truth that resides in that person. And hopefully each of you are, if you're in the, the, the zone of I'm looking to get married kind of thing, you're looking for a spouse that will fit that mold, right? Somebody, uh, a Proverbs 31 woman, or uh, you're looking for um, a man after God's own heart. I'm going to throw that pen on the ground. So if that's something you agree with, disagree with, you want to add to it, um, you want to refine something I've said, there's a comment section below, fire away. You're not going to offend me, and uh, we'll probably learn from each other. Because remember, we all know in part, and we prophesy in part. So you might know a part that I don't know, and I would love to hear about it. Um, also, no matter where you're at on that spectrum, from being worthless to being of great value, you can always be uh, improving, right? So let's stay at it. That's all i got to share. God bless. Take care. See you next one.